John and I started working together as a duo after we, after we left Steel Ice Band. And he and I had worked together briefly in the Albion Country Band back in 73 and really enjoyed it. So we decided we'd work as a duo. While we were in Steel Eye, we, we had sort of, we used to scuttle off into the corner and say, there must be a, a different way of having the sort of excitement of the folk rock lineup, you know, drum kit and electric guitars and stuff. And then, sort of by fluke, really, Martin and I separately met Howard Evans, and Martin asked him to play on one of his albums. And Howard, was fabulous, you know, and uh, and the way playing together developed from that trio was a lot to do with the way Howard was and how he approached music. Oh, I've no cup, I've no can, and I cannot give a drink to a palmer man, cannot give a drink to a palmer man, sun shines down so early. So we then had to think of a name, and that's when we thought of Brass Monkey, so 1982 was when we... That's when we became Brass Monkey. Fine for him. The sun shines down so early. Our first gig was at the at the Black Horse in Tellum, down near 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 Hastings, which was absolutely massive. But for us, it was such a blast. <laughs> Adding the brass hadn't really happened in English folk music, which is the world we were in. But of course there's a very strong tradition uh, of military bands and brass bands who play you know, the old-fashioned repertoire like military marches, uh, uh, folk tunes, you know, a lot of the tunes you play in the army are the same as people dance around to still today. So, um, and Howard had done a few years in the Welsh Guard, so he was familiar with that idiom. Well, when you're collaborating with such diverse instruments, I mean, you've got squeeze boxes, you've got acoustic guitar, you've got vocals, um, an array of percussion instruments. Obviously, that um, is quite difficult because you've got different balances going on. Sometimes the brass are playing on their own, uh, so that's easier to, to balance with. Then you might suddenly find your a solo trumpet with a guitar. Um, so there's all these dy different dynamics going on. Obviously because the brass players are capable of devastating everything, one has to be a little bit subtle about it. Brass has a way of propelling any band that um, is unsurpassed. So the repertoire we're doing is uh, is basically culled from uh, from everything we've ever done. We've just gone back through our whole sort of back catalogue and um, rearranged the tracks that we thought would best suit the uh, enhanced lineup. So we've sort of picked items from all, all over our 30 years. Revisiting all that that older stuff has been a real gift. Things like that are a real pleasure to do again. Because Martin and I, Martin Carthy and I, move in this world all the time, you know, I think part of our job description, if you like, is to uh, dig out unfamiliar stuff. And there's, you know, there's so much material languishing in books and reinvigorate it and give it life again. The Litchfield tattoo is just found in one musician's tune book in Derbyshire. And, uh, I, I was in a different outfit that recorded it ages ago and Martin Brinsford said, well, let's do that one because it's a great tune, which it is. And um, Radstock Jig, that was recorded from one bloke in Somerset. And so although it's been published in the folk world, not that many people play it, so it's great to dust these things off. The 
great thing about folk music is wherever you live, there's a, a huge reservoir of songs and tunes that are within, you know, not too far a distance from where you live. There's t so much stuff in England that the majority of English people are quite unaware of. So it's great to be able to dip into that and say, here, this comes from near where you are. Listen to this. This is fabulous. Yeah. For me, it's been a bit of a history lesson. And to learn about the history of England and the characters uh, that, that have really created our society, our culture, through the medium of song. That uh, not only the music, but the text is extraordinary. And um, it's been a real learning curve for me. To retrieve uh, the jolly bold robber is is, is some, uh, something of a I'll call it a triumph actually because it was it's one of those it, it's such a great song but there's something about that first you know, that first flush that can be fabulous and the, I think the jolly bold robber represents that beautifully. bold robber, don't take them from me. I love the big lineup, and uh, I hope we can crack on with it because I think we've all absolutely felt invigorated and you know with a real sort of renewed energy about the whole thing. So I, I hope we can hang on to that and you know go on to greater things. And because it's been recorded and filmed, you know, uh, for this this project that we're doing now. Hello, viewers. Um, you know, uh, at least we've sort of captured this excitement and I hope we can just build on it and, you know, go on forever. <laughs> but if I just lifted a thousand bright guineas Well, I'm damned if I'd have stopped a poor sailor like me